tumbling, we bring a bigger capability to the battlefield. In combat, we have to have the full team there. And a lot can happen in 20 to 25 minutes. The trust factor is huge. Patient can get real bad and it can get uh, very overwhelming. One of the rules here in theaters is called the golden hour. Um, we have one hour to get a patient from the time that they in incurred their injury to a, a major hospital, to a surgeon. So we have to fulfill that, and a lar large amount of that time is the transportation. So we're able to make up time by going in the air fast. Just the two medics in the back are fulfilling the jobs of almost eight people in the hospital. That golden hour takes into account that uh, from the time of injury to surgery, it should ideally be less than an hour, and that's kind of the standard that's used in theater. A couple things are really specific to aviation. So um, the fact that we're taking them up to altitude um, means that they're automatically going to be a little hypoxic, and so their oxygen levels in the blood's not going to be as high as they are on the ground. The patients are already injured, so that's one of the things that we can always count on being there. That's the factor we have to overcome. Another thing is the hypothermia. Um, even if it's 100 degrees outside and we're sweating, the patients themselves are usually stripped naked and uh, due to blood loss are already susceptible to hypothermia. I've never had the satisfaction in my career um, that I've gotten from help to save a life. We can pull somebody off the battlefield. We can do more than transport. We can actually do um, procedures to the patient that are literally life-saving for them. This has given me more deeper satisfaction because I know for sure there are people that go home to their wives and their little girls and their families as a result of what this group and what Dust Off does in general. It's an unstable environment. It's not controlled whatsoever. If it's cold outside, it's going to be cold in the helicopter. If it's hot outside, it's going to be hot in the helicopter. Now you put three patients in the back from a MCI and you're having to lay on top of patients or kneel in between their legs or, you know, straddle them just to do work. All that questioning, all that, you know, can I get someone else's help or I don't feel comfortable doing this, that's, that's out the window. Even though there's a language barrier um, and sometimes our patients are unresponsive so you can't even talk to them, we still try and best communicate either what we're going to do um, or try to reassure them that, you know, we, we are there for them. The people on it, we don't die in compartments. We're either all going to make it or we're all probably not going to make it. He can get inside my head without even talking. I know if he's off doing something, it's important for the patient. He knows the same for myself. Any place that they'll approve us, we'll go in there to get that patient.